Hey, good evening, good evening. Welcome to another Pro Wrestling Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. All right. First round of the Stardom Cinderella Tournament 2023 is now in the books. A very wild first round, y'all, with a handful of of double eliminations. To be specific, one, two, three, four, five double eliminations in the first round of this tournament alone. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about all 18 matches that took place at the Stardom Cinderella Tournament first round. But before we get started, be sure to check out the link in the description to Game Beauty for an awesome lineup of video game themed makeup and cosmetic products. And if you see something you like and want to make a purchase, be sure to use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP, all in caps, and you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that, that coupon. Alrighty, one day after Stardom New Blood Premium, March 26th, same venue, the Yokohama Budokan in Yokohama, Japan. The yearly Stardom Cinderella Tournament. First round was the 26. 18 matches. We got 36 total competitors, 18 first round matches. Whew. It was wild. Really, really wild. Now, just to recap, remember the rules. Each match, 10 minute time limit. You can win by pinfall, submission, DQ, count out, or thrown over the top rope, landing on the floor. And in the case of a double count out or a double elimination like over the top rope or a time limit draw, both competitors are eliminated. So just a quick recap of the rules. And like I said, the winner of this tournament gets to wear the Cinderella dress with a tiara, and they get one wish. Usually the wish is in the form of a title shot of the, of the title of their choice. That's typically how it works. But anyway, let's get started with our first round matches. First match we had was Lady C versus X. And X was revealed to be, thanks to Rossi Ogawa before the show started, revealed to be none other than Cosmic Angel's Wakasukiyama. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. With her victory with Tam Nakano over Nene Takahashi and Kairi at New Blood Premium, Rossi Ogawa saw fit to put Wakasukiyama as one of the exes into the Stardom Cinderella tournament. And therefore, she was put in the match against Lady C. So, Lady C versus Wakasukiyama. And, of course, big opportunity for Waka. Shot the mess out of her. Um, definitely a, a good opening match. Um... But, Wakasukiyama gets her first singles victory. Gets the uh, gets Lady C with a roll-up. Kind of like that same dragon suplex. Or not dragon suplex. Like tiger suplex roll-up that she did on uh, Nene Takahashi. That's how she pinned Lady C for the 1-2-3. And Wakasukiyama not only wins her first singles match in stardom, but also advances into the next round of the Cinderella tournament. Wow. So that's when y'all decide to give her her first singles victory. Well, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that um, once I've gone through all the matches, but I'll elaborate more on that because that's still kind of weird to me. But... Waka advances. Waka mania continues. Waka advances, which I'll get more into detail of that afterwards. 
Okay. Next up, we had Saya Ida versus Miyu Amasaki in a match that I felt really could have gone either way, and it definitely showed in this match. Both ladies, back and forth, really could have gone either way. But Saya Ida gets the victory after pinning Miyu Amasaki, after hitting kind of like a variation of, of Ryback shell shocked finisher. Y'all remember that finisher? Like, that looked kind of similar to what Saya Ida pulled off um, to put away Miyu Amasaki. It looked very similar. Very similar. But Saya Ida, the resident gorilla, gets the victory and she advances in the Cinderella tournament, defeating Miyu Amasaki. Okay, next up, we had the future of stardom champion Ami Sore taking on the pineapple girl Yuna Mizumori. Now, definitely a great showcase of power between both of these ladies. Definitely on full effect. And you know what? It was good to see Yuna Mizumori really bring it in this match, especially considering how great she's looked in previous matches and, of course, in the triangle, the triangle derby. But Ami Sore would not be denied as she continues to climb the ranks and picks up a big victory in this tournament to advance by eliminating Yuna Mizumori, actually throwing her over the top rope onto the floor, which is, you know, one of the ways you can you can win. So Ami Sore eliminates Yuna Mizumori, and she advances in the Cinderella tournament. Okay, next up, we had Starlight Kid, recently crowned one half of the New Blood Tag Team Champions, faces off against Haruka Umesaki, which, of course, we all know is also karma, but still, two, two, different, two different characters. Anyway, uh, both these ladies went at it. Um, nice, nice show of sportsmanship uh, before the match, you know, pre-match handshake. But both of these ladies definitely went at it hard. And, you know, Haruka Misaki looked pretty dang on strong in this match. And you know something? The outcome was not really what I expected. But both Starlight Kid and Haruka Misaki eliminated at the same time over the top rope onto the floor. So, double elimination means both ladies are out of the tournament. Did not really see that one coming, in all honesty. I, I honestly felt like Starlight Kid was going to pick up the victory, but nah. Both ladies are out. But I mean, you know, now that I think about it, being that, you know, Haruka, I mean, as Karma, I mean, they're both tag team champions. I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of understandable. It's, it's understandable. But yeah. And that is your first double elimination of the tournament. Okay, next up, we had Hina versus XX, which XX turned out to be the newest member of Club Venus, Xena, which I don't know much about her, but she's Australian, and she was trained by... Robbie Eagles, who currently, you know, has been uh, working at with New Japan Pro Wrestling and also the newest member of uh, TMDK as well. <coughs> Just thought I'd point that out. But yes, Xena versus Hina. And you know, she kind of reminds me of like, look-wise, she kind of almost reminds me of Sonya Deville in a way. Just maybe a little more thicker. But she kind of reminds me of, of Sonya Deville. But Xena looked pretty strong in this match. Also, shout out to Hina. Hina was rocking some new gear. I, I, I just noticed that. She was rocking some new gear. So it was good to see Hina with some new gear. But both of these ladies went at it. Um, definitely, Xena looked pretty solid looked pretty solid, and was able to put away Hina with a double knee gut buster 
to advance into the tournament. So, Xena, newest member of Club Venus, of course led by Mina Shirakawa, advances in the tournament. So, welcome to stardom, Xena. All right, next up, uh, more Club Venus action as we had Mariah May versus Rena. So, Mariah May versus Rena. And of course, uh, Mariah May also comes out with some new gear. So, a lot of ladies flashing the new gear in this, in this show. But Mariah May and Rena. Uh, definitely went back and forth. There was even some extra taunting from Mariah May to, to Rena. Of course, being that they've had exchanges before in previous conferences. But this was Mariah May's moment to shine, and she definitely did not disappoint. As she put a re she put away Rena for the one two three after hitting her with the happily ever after tombstone pile driver. Very well executed, and. Yeah, so both twin sisters are out. Hmm, it's a shame. But Mariah May advances in the Cinderella tournament. Next up, we had uh, Momokogo versus Saki Kashima. And Momokogo with new gear. I, I like her new gear. Her new gear looks really good. Um, but both these ladies went at it pretty hard. I was pulling... A lot for uh, Momokogo. I was really hoping that maybe she could pull it off. Even though I figured Saki Kashima was going to win. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Komomo fan. So, I'm heavy behind her. But, of course, Momokogo fell victim to the deadliest pin in the face of professional wrestling. As Saki Kashima pins the Peach Star with the Kishikaisei. Yeah. I hate to see it. But yeah. So Saki Kashima advances in the tournament. Ah, uh, poor Komomo. It's crazy. Anyway, next up we had Mirai versus Hanan. And this was a close match. This was a really close match. Um really could have gone either way with both of these ladies. Um, Hanan looked really strong. But, man. So that means all three Judoka sisters are out of the Cinderella tournament as Mirai was able to submit Hanan with the Miramare to advance in the Cinderella tournament. Dang. All three sisters out. That sucks. And of course, let us not forget, Mirai won the Cinderella tournament last year. So she has an opportunity to uh, win it again. Uh, the only only superstar that has done it back-to-back -back so far has been Mayu Iwatani, uh, the first two years of when the Cinderella tournament debuted. So we'll see. Maybe Mirai can, can repeat it. Maybe she can do the repeat. All right, next up we had uh, we had Koguma versus Tekla. Koguma and Tekla. Now, uh, remember, Koguma was also a finalist in the Cinderella tournament. Um, the Toxic Spider, Tekla. Uh, you know what? I was really hoping that Koguma was going to pull it off and kind of start the road to redeem herself. But you know what? I'm actually, I'm actually okay with Tekla uh, winning this match. Um, I just felt like this was one of the matchups it would have been nice to see go a little longer. I mean, you know, of course, right under the 10-minute time limit, but just a little longer. But uh, Tekla was able to pin Koguma uh, with an O'Connor roll, uh, roll her up. And the high-speed genius is out. The toxic spider advances but you know this was this was a big deal for Tekla I feel like she hasn't really had a, a big statement win in, in a while so I'm cool with it 
All right, next up we had Natsuko Tora versus Ruoka, her BMI 2000 uh, tag team partner, and Ruoka did not waste any time to get the preemptive strike outside of the ring on Natsuko Tora, and she laid into her. I mean, had the, the box shots, the pipe shot, the uh, freezer bomb through the, through the table, like, she just unloaded on Natsuko Tora just from the start and pretty much throughout most of the match. But it was a very bold move, very bold move, that she pinned her once. And when it looked like she was about to win, Ruka pulled her head up. I'm like, uh-uh-uh, that wasn't smart. That was gutsy, but that was not smart. And sure enough, Ruaka paid for it in the end. Oh, she paid for it, all right. Not only did she get defeated, she also got misted, which I've never seen uh, Natsuko Tora use the mist before, at least not to my knowledge. But yeah, she spat some blue mist in the face of Ruaka, and she eventually put away Ruaka uh, for the one, two, three after hitting her with a swanton bomb. So Natsuko Tora advances in the tournament, but you know her and Ruka walk out of the uh, ring together into the back together. I mean, after all, they are tag team partners and part of the same faction of Oedo Time. But gotta give credit to Ruka for you know just bringing it for the preemptive strike. She came close, and I honestly thought it looked like it was gonna be an upset, but not this time. Okay, next up we had Shuri versus Tomoka Inaba. And both these ladies look really solid. I mean, a lot of trading strikes. And even trading submissions as well. Uh, the tag team partners of Karate Brave. And also in the same stable of God's Eye. Like I said, I wasn't a fan of this being a first round matchup. But just... Ugh... It is what it is. Shuri submits Tomoka Inaba with the stretch muffler to advance to the next round. But it just sucks to see these two put up against each other in the first round. It's just such a bummer. All right, next up we had Azumi versus Hazuki. Uh, sign of sportsmanship showed at the beginning of the match, and then it pretty much turned into a high speed match for the most part, which is understandable. I mean, Azumi, the current high-speed champion. Hazuki, a former high-speed champion. But uh, these ladies went at it. High speed at its finest. And I tell you, the finish of this was pretty sick. As Azumi hit Hazuki with a Torbellino on the apron to the floor. Of course, eliminating both ladies, but... That was a sick way, a very sick way for this match to end because, I mean, they, they hit that mat hard. But because it was an over-the-top rope elimination, both ladies are out. So, Azumi Hazuki out of the tournament. So, that makes two double eliminations. All right, next up, we had... Julia, the World of Stardom champion, versus Mai Sakurai. And once again, Mai Sakurai, with the preemptive strike on Julia uh, before the bell rang. And she definitely took advantage. Definitely took advantage. And these ladies went at it. Slapped each other quite a lot, too. But, I mean, these ladies went hard at it. Of course, these two were tag team partners as well. Both part of Donna Del Mundo. And the unthinkable happened, which I think many can say this was the upset of the first round. This was definitely the upset of the first round as Mai Sakurai suplexed Julia off of the ring apron, previously over the top rope and off the ring apron. To get the victory and advance to the next round 
in the Cinderella tournament. Now, remember, when that suplex happened, Julia had already been over the top rope. My Sakurai had not gone over the top rope. She went between the ropes. So, even though they both fell to the fell to the floor from the suplex, because my Sakurai didn't go over the top rope originally, Julia did. Therefore, Julia is eliminated. So, yeah, y'all. The World of Stardom champion eliminated in the first round of the Cinderella tournament by Mai Sakurai. What a big victory for her. Huge victory for her. But yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that's the upset of the first round, for sure. All right, next up, we had Natsupoi versus Mina Shirakawa. And this match was also pretty crazy. Also, uh... Mariah May and Xena need to work on the Pink Bandit dance uh, during the entrance with Mina Shirakawa because they they do not look good doing that dance. And Xena doesn't look like she knows what the heck she's doing. But they need to work on that. They need to really work on that. Anyway, as far as the, as far as the match, uh, both ladies looked really strong. Um, I tell you, Mina's striking ability has been getting better and better each and every match. But Natsupoi, you know, Natsupoi very clever and just really, you know, kept Mina on her feet. But when it was all said and done, while being tied up with a figure four leg lock, both ladies, which were which had gone over the top rope onto the apron, but once the, the figure four was locked in on the apron both ladies rolled off to the floor therefore third double elimination of the tournament so both Natsupoi and Mina Shirakawa are out and of course they exchange one fl final slap between each other before you know they move on alright next up we had the wonder of stardom champion Saya Kamatani versus the icon of stardom Mayu Iwatani. Um, I was pretty pumped for this match, and, and both these ladies definitely delivered as expected. But I figured the I figured the outcome was was pretty easy to pick, as both ladies got eliminated over the top rope, um, pretty much like a head scissors. Mayu got like the head scissors on Saya Kamatani and pulled her over, but yet yeah, both ladies fell to the floor. But both Golden Phoenix and the Icon of Stardom are out of this tournament. Yeah, that was, that was pretty, pretty much an easy one to predict, to, to be real with you. Um, next up, we had Micah versus Momo Watanabe. Now, I really enjoyed this match from start to finish. Both ladies looked really strong. And many could say both ladies have a great argument as who could be the winner of this tournament. You know, winner of this overall tournament. Not to mention, remember, Momo Watanabe has won a Cinderella tournament before, so... This is not anything new to her. But the finish, the finish was actually really impressive as both ladies went over the top rope, but Momo Watanabe puts away Micah with a Meteora on the apron. As she hits that, Micah slumps off the apron. Therefore, the Black Peach, Momo Watanabe, advances in the tournament. So... Good stuff for her, although I really would have wanted Micah to advance, but, I mean, hey, you know, Momo, Momo could use the nod, but I could understand how this could have gone either way, but I, I would have loved for Micah to have advanced, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Let's see. We had... Oh, 
Utami Hayashishita versus Nene Takahashi was next. And these ladies uh, definitely traded a lot of moves. Um, this really could have gone either way. And you know what? This is a matchup that I was definitely looking forward to eventually turning into a rivalry. Hopefully maybe a deep rivalry. And I don't think it's going to be over between these two ladies yet. But this resulted in a double elimination, but this time via a time limit draw. So remember, matches are only 10 minutes, 10 minute time limit. So this ended in a time limit draw and both these ladies kept beating up on each other even after the match, just laying in to each other. It was crazy. It was really, really crazy. But yeah, both ladies beating the mess out of each other. And that makes, uh, yeah, that makes five. Five double eliminations. Four were over the top rope at the same time. And one was via time limit draw. Time limit draw. So it's crazy. Really, really crazy. All in the first round. And then the main event of the first round was Tam Nakano versus the Jumbo Princess Himeka. Um, didn't expect this one to be the main event, but I mean, it is nice that, you know, Himeka, being that this is, you know, she's competing until she retires, it's nice to see her in, the, in a main event match. So that's cool. That's really, really cool. And both these ladies look solid throughout the whole match. And you know what? I have to say, I was very impressed with Tam Nakano in this match. Don't get me wrong, Himeka did her thing, as usual. But Tam Nakano not only hit four violet shootings, but she legit ended up lifting up Himeka, which I did not think she would be able to pull off. Because Himeka's not a small woman. But Tam Nakano put away Himeka with the violet screwdriver. To advance in the Cinderella tournament. I did not think she would, was going to be able to pick her up like that. And she did it. And hit her with the violet screwdriver. I was like, wow. That was impressive. So Tam Nakano advances. So. First round of the Cinderella tournament is in the books. Now. Looking at the bracket, so round two will be on April 1st. Round three and the quarterfinals will be on April 2nd. So the next matchups that we have so far, so we got my Sakurai versus Mariah May. And then the winner of that match will go on to face Momo Watanabe. All right. We also have Shuri versus Saki Kashima. Ooh, a matchup we're very familiar with. Um, and the winner of that match will move on to face Waka Tsukiyama. Um, we have Tam Nakano versus Natsuko Tora, and the winner of that match will go on to face Ami Sore. Uh, we got, we got Mirai versus Saya Ida, and we got Thekla versus Xena. So, got some interesting matchups coming up. Now... Back to Wakasukiyama. Like I said in my previous video, I was really hoping her first win in stardom would be a singles match instead of a tag team match. But they flip-flopped them. So, got her first mat first victory in a tag team match at Stardom New Blood Premium. Got her first singles match victory first round of the Cinderella Tournament. <coughs> now, being that this happened the way that it did.
something to think about. So she's pinned Nene Takahashi in a tag team match. She pinned Lady C in a singles match. That's two back-to-back -back victories for Waka. So she's on a two-match win streak. If they really want to make Waka Mania legit and true, I know this sounds crazy, y'all, but looking at how the bracket looks, if you really want Waka Mania to become a thing, you have her beat Tam Nakano in the finals and win the Cinderella Tournament 2023. Sounds crazy, but I feel like they have to at least consider this idea. Otherwise, and, and don't get me wrong, <clears throat> I'm not saying that with Waka winning this tournament, whatever she wishes for, she ends up winning that. I'm not saying that, that it has to be that, but... You have her here. She was one of the, the secret entrants of this tournament. I think they need to go in with Waka. Now that she's finally got a victory, tag team match, victory in this tournament, I think they need to shock the world and go, and go all the way with Waka. And here's the thing. Being that Wakasukiyama and Tam Nakano are on opposite sides of the tournament bracket, Tam Nakano versus Wakasukiyama in the finals of the Cinderella tournament sounds way too perfect. And you have Waka beat the leader of Cosmic Angels to win the Cinderella tournament. And... I'll do you even one better. As for what Waka should wish for, is one of these three. One of three options. One, a shot at the future of Stardom Championship. Two, a shot at the world of Stardom Championship. Because remember, when she went in the gauntlet against Julia, it ended in a draw. She lasted against Julia to a draw. I don't care what the time limit was. She lasted against the World of Stardom champion to a draw. Or three... Be the first one to wish for a shot at the IWGP Women's Championship. What y'all think? Honestly, they, they should really go in. They should really go in on this. Because here's the thing. Is there really any point to Tam winning this tournament? She's she's going to get a World of Stardom Championship match at All-Star Grand Queendom against Julia anyway. So is there really any point for Tam Nakano to win this tournament? You know? Like... Looking at looking at the ladies left over so far in this tournament. I mean, Ami Sore would be nice, but I don't see it. Tam Nakano, I don't see it cuz like I said, she's got a World of Ch World of Stardom Championship opportunity at on April 23rd. Natsuko Tora, I don't see it. Mirai, who won it last year, 
don't see it. Sayaita, don't see it. Tekla, eh, eh, probably not. Zena, probably not. Shuri, she might advance, but I don't see Shuri winning it. Saki Kashima, eh, I mean, Saki Kashima is already due a high speed title opportunity. Which I believe that will be at uh, uh, All Star Grand Queendom. Mariah May, don't see it. My Sakurai, don't see it. Momo Watanabe, I mean, Momo Watanabe, perhaps. I mean, she's won this tournament before, and Momo hasn't really won anything big in a while. And then there's Waka Tsukiyama, who's on a win streak. But I could definitely see a Waka Tsukiyama versus Tam Nakano, Nakano in the finals and Waka actually pulls it off. If they're going to do Waka Mania, go in. And this is the time to do it. I'm just saying. I mean, I know they can't go back and change the order of how Waka got her victories, but... You got to roll with what's, what's in front of you. <clears throat> so that's all I can say with that. But round two, April 1st in Tochiki. Round three in the quarterfinals would be April 2nd at uh, Corquin Hall. And the semifinals and finals, April 15th in Yoyogi. That's the upcoming schedule. And like I said, just to recap, Momo Watanabe, Mai Sakurai, Mariah May, Shuri, Saki Kashima, Waka Tsukiyama, Ami Sore, Tam Nakano, Natsuko Tora, Mirai, Saya Ida, Tekla, and Xena all have advanced in this tournament successfully. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out, it was also announced of... Um, one of the new shows that they're going to do. Stardom Flashing Champions 2023 got announced, and that will be on May 27th. May 27th of this year, which I believe is on a Saturday. It's on a Saturday. So May 27th, uh, that's Memorial Day weekend, now that I think about it. But yeah, so that's Stardom Flashing Champions 2023 that got announced. But anyway, um, also shout out to Waka Tsukiyama who joined on uh, commentary for the Cinderella tournament after she uh, got her victory. So shout out to her. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are. What did you think about the, the 18 first round matches of the Cinderella tournament? What do you think about the outcomes? Who are your picks or pick to win the Stardom Cinderella Tournament 2023? Um, don't forget to also check out Game Beauty. And like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Two. My name is Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed evening. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Peace out.